The following involves one of the worst cases of child abuse in French history. Viewer discretion is advised. A French couple named Eric Sabatier and Virginie Doris had a daughter named Marina, born February 27, 2001. Marina was not wanted by either of her parents. Virginie and Eric had broken up before Marina was even born, and Marina was taken into state care. But when Marina was just a month old, her mother got her back from state care. Marina was Virginie's second child, and after she was born, Virginie and Eric would go on to have three other children together. But for some reason, Marina became became the target of all of her parents' violence and aggression from a very early age, which her siblings were spared from. This is not a totally uncommon occurrence in cases of child abuse, and it's often referred to as the Cinderella phenomenon, where one child is singled out by their parents or caretakers to be the target of violence, whereas the other children in the home will be treated normally. Eric and Virginie would regularly inflict extreme punishments on Marina. She was whipped with belts and other objects, kicked, punched, and over the years they began to just torture her with cold showers and holding her head under water in the bathtub. Marina would essentially be waterboarded by her own parents. She was also often starved and then forced to consume salt and vinegar to induce vomiting, and then at times she was even forced to consume her own vomit. She would often be bound to her bed with duct tape and gagged, as well as forced to walk barefoot over rough terrain. Virginie's sister noticed these atrocities in 2006 when Marina was only Five. And this made Marina's grandmother contact the French maltreatment hotline, but the staff didn't take her seriously. In 2007, teachers at Marina's school also reported they believed she was being abused, so they contacted the school's doctor, who had a meeting with Marina's father, Eric. But Eric managed to convince this doctor that all of Marina's symptoms were from a rare genetic disease. And I will never understand why these parents so badly want to keep a child that they clearly don't love or care about just to continue to abuse them. I mean, I don't like the way foster care is run, but at this point, just give the child to state care so that they might have a chance of a loving home. In 2008, the Sabatier family moved, and the headmistress at Marina's new school was informed about the suspicions of abuse. So she informed social services about Marina's case, and there was finally an investigation. But during the meeting with a medical examiner who found 19 different injuries on Marina's body, Eric just claimed that all of these injuries were from normal childhood accidents. And during Marina's own interview, she also gave innocent explanations for all of her injuries. And she did this because Virginie had threatened Marina that she would never see her parents again if she told the truth about the abuse. And Marina always loved her parents, no matter what they did to her. Which makes this case even more heartbreaking. In documents from Marina's school, she was said to have unjustified absences, small unexplained injuries, and bulimic behavior at only seven years old. In April of 2009, Marina returned to school after a long period of absence which was said to be a vacation with a serious injury to her foot. The headmistress and school doctor sent Marina to the hospital where she ended up staying for five weeks. The hospital tried to find a medical explanation for all that was going on with Marina, but there was none so they reported their suspicions of abuse to social services. And even after all this, Marina was still sent back to live with her parents after she was released from the hospital. Social services did do a follow-up visit in June 2009, but the social worker and nurse who visited the Sabatier home felt there was no element of danger and noted all the children were relaxed and smiling. One night in early August of 2009, Marina had been beaten by her parents and left naked in the cellar. Before Virginie left her in the cellar, Marina said she had a headache. Then she told her mother goodnight and that she loved her, and these would be Marina's last words. The next morning, Eric and Virginie found that Marina was dead, and they decided to dispose of her body by hiding it in a trunk and filling it with cement. A month later, Eric decided to alert authorities that Marina had disappeared. He also claimed that Marina had Down syndrome to explain her appearance in photos, but this wasn't true. Marina was a normal little girl, but over the years, all of the violence she had experienced had disfigured her. Three days into the search, investigators no longer believed Eric and Virginie's story, and they were able to get them to confess about what really happened to Marina. Eric eventually led police to Marina's body. Her cause of death was ruled to be acute subdural hematoma caused by being hit on the head. 
accompanied with asphyxiation because that night Marina had been given a bath and was repeatedly held under the water. She also had hypothermia and had inhaled her own vomit during the abuse. Virginie and Eric were sentenced to 30 years in prison, without the possibility of parole for a minimum of 20 years. This case brought the institutional failings of the French social services into question. 